so it must be time for our weekly chat and channel update. And I hope you all had a great week. Been so busy. A lot of you saw over the weekend we started our uh, little living room slash hallway renovation. We're going to lay some flooring, laminate floor, pulling up carpet, pulling up carpet pad, painting, painting ceilings and trim and walls, and it's horrible. And I had a meltdown yesterday because I don't know why I thought that we could just lay the hallway and then move on to the living room. It's just not going to work that way. So this is giving me a chance to um, purge, declutter, put my living room on a diet, let's say. And we're just packing everything up. I thought, you know what? Let's just pack all the crap up. We're going to take it to the storage. And then it'll be time for Christmas decorations when we finish. Because like I said in another video, I'm not having Thanksgiving at my house this year. I'm having Thanksgiving at my mom's house, which is down the street. So I'm not going to stress about that. I'm just going to cook this year and carry it to her house, which will be better. And so I'm over my meltdown, coming to the clearer realization. Um, I, I get like that. Do some of you get like that? Do, I really, really go at it. I get so upset right away, and I yell, and I get very upset, and I blow up and then I have to back off I have to take a deep breath and realize there's nothing I can do to change the situation and just roll with it because you're wasting a lot of energy getting upset over it and there's nothing you can do to change it and make it any different except just to do it the way it has to be done so moving on <clears throat> we got some really great questions this week um me Harris 0925 asks can you show me how to roast a turkey well, yes, last year and the year before I roasted a bird and I did videos. The year before I did a video of a very large chicken and last year I did a video of a very small turkey. So take your pick. Either way, I might recommend that the one I did last year was better. That turkey came up positively beautiful and it was picture perfect, really. So um, go to my channel in the little search bar and I don't know if you, how many of you know this, but when you go to someone's channel, there's a little search bar you can type in turkey and it'll bring up all the videos that I have turkey listed in. And, and then you can find that video. It's called The Perfect Turkey, Start to Finish. So um, go to my channel and you can find that. And then I had more than one person ask me, lately I've been using that Gosner Shelf Stable Milk in my recipes and the videos, and they've asked me where I got it. Well, you used to be able to get it. Um, my friend Cat's Cradle found it at Dollar Tree and did a video on it. So all of us, you know, that watch her, we then went to our local Dollar Trees and I snagged a whole bunch of it. But then you could also go to Dollar Tree online and you could order it and have it delivered to your local store for no shipping at all. Well, wouldn't you know it, Gosner's price point changed and the Dollar Tree doesn't carry it anymore. So what you can do is you can go to the Gosner website, I'll put a link in the underbar, and you can contact them directly and they will tell you how much it's going to cost. I will warn you, when they tell you how much the shipping is going to be, you may want to be sitting down. However, it's very good quality milk. It is GMO free. It is an antibiotic free and chemical free and all kinds of wonderful things about it. It's delicious. The whole milk tastes like half and half. Their heavy cream is out freaking standing. Their heavy cream, you can make butter in too. And if you are familiar with the Queen's Cabinet channel, she hasn't uploaded a video in a long time, and I'm hoping that she's doing okay. Um, but she has an amazing food storage and has only been doing it for less than a year. Uh, and she is the one I saw actually use the Gosner whipping cream to make butter. And she has some fabulous videos using food storage, and you might consider going over and looking at what she has uploaded already. Um, so that's uh, that's the skinny on the Gosner milk. They have all kinds. They have flavored milk, whole milk, 2% milk, half and half, heavy cream. And my rice is boiling over. Okay, sorry. Um, let's see. Oh, Back to Basics 44 sent me a recipe for Creole beans that I will be trying in the near future. And then I also had someone else, and I know I have the recipe. I saved it, but I couldn't find her screen name. She sent me a recipe for a stew in a cloud or something like that, and I'm going to be trying that as well. And that's a food storage recipe, and it looks really interesting and really delicious. So we're going to be trying that one. 
And I love it when you send me recipes that you want to share with me. I am a recipe junkie. I have a library of cookbooks that you would not believe. Um, always picking up cookbooks at yard sales and dollar sales and bar the book bin. You know, they go in somewhere and they've got a bargain book bin. I can't ever walk past that without looking. Okay, so that's our question update. What did we upload this week? We did, I'm going to have to remember back. And there's the telephone. I didn't write them down this week, but who is it? Oh, it's the school. Okay, because there's a half day tomorrow. And we have off on Friday. I know, no fair. I don't have a half day tomorrow. Um, what did we do? I can't remember. We did the cheeseburger macaroni. And we did the, the, um, Bonnie Cristo sandwiches, and we did buttercream frosting, and on Saturday I uploaded sour cream, how to make your own sour cream from buttermilk and heavy cream, and I've already had some people contact me back saying that they made some and that they loved it. So, yes, it may not be sour cream in the vast sense of sour cream, um, because it's not made with a culture. It is made with cultured buttermilk, however. And um, in an SHTF situation, you would be happy to have it um, because you can use it in a lot of different recipes. But what else did I do? I guess that's pretty much uh, it. Um, and then there will be one I'm thinking. I didn't do one on Sunday. That's why I'm, in my mind I'm thinking there should be one more. <clears throat> Sunday came and went and the hallway was more important than anything else so anyway this coming week I'm showing how to cook rice properly because they've had a lot of people ask me how to do that I'm gonna show preppers pantry um, where we're gonna do a saucy smoked sausage skillet um, <clears throat> pardon me I'm gonna probably do another um, personal care item for the holidays are coming and maybe cake pops it just depends on my schedule because we're so busy with the living room I do intend to continue uploading every day um, because I don't like to miss a day. <clears throat> so it'll just have to be a surprise this week because I'm a little less organized today than I have been in the past. Now on for some serious stuff. Today or yesterday, my friend Cat's Cradle over at Cat's Cradle Channel uploaded a video about GMO foods. I would urge every single one of my viewers to go over to her channel and watch this video. It is 18 minutes long and every single second of it is worth it. Um, she goes over a lot of things. She has provided a lot of links and a lot of suggestions as to different documentaries if you're unfamiliar with GMO. If you're just learning about GMO, about its effects, what, what it's all about. She's listed some documentary films that I have watched every single one of them. She's, she's listed some books about the subject. I have read a couple of those. Um, and there are some very important articles that she links to that I think that it, everybody should read and be aware of this stuff because the only way to stop it is for mass knowledge. Everybody needs to become very aware of what is going on with respect to this because this right now with respect to the GMO and um, big agribusiness like the evil empire of Monsanto and I don't care what kind of a list I get on. Um, they're going to control the world's food supply, not just America's, but the entire world. And back in the 70s, Henry Kissinger drew up this grand plan called Agenda 21, which I also urge you to look into and read it and learn about it for yourself. It will make your head explode. And then go watch Alex Jones' documentary, Endgame, because that will make your face melt off. I just had someone yesterday who said, I came to watch one of your videos to make me feel happy because I just finished watching Endgame. And I said, Endgame will make your head explode after your face melts off. And it's true. Because once you finally wake up and come to that realization that the world is not the place that you truly believed it was, you really have some soul searching to do within yourself. But in, 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 the, in good time you do come through it and you realize that the only one who can change your own existence is you. So, uh, I go over to Cat's Cradle and watch what she has uploaded yesterday regarding the GMO foods. It's really worth it. It's really excellent. She did a great job and I want to thank her for that. Um, <clears throat> and let's see. Oh, my channel. Go to my channel page. I divide a lot of my videos up into playlists. So there's a hope. There's a, I always want to do that. 
There's a holiday they're coming playlist. There's a what's for dinner playlist. There's a bakery playlist and there is a prepper's pantry playlist. Wow. Say that three times fast. Prepper's pantry playlist. I can't even do it. Okay. <clears throat> Um, this way, when you want to look for something specific, you can just go to the playlist, you can type in a search and look for what you're looking for specifically and go to it more quickly than just trying to search through. I think I have almost 300 videos. I think I'm over 275 at this point. So, um, and I'm very close to having 5,000 subscribers. Thank you all for subscribing, pardon me, subscribing to my channel and following me, interacting with me, and communicating with me. I really love everything. I love everything about this. And I just want to thank you because, like I said before, without you, none of it is worth it. doesn't even matter. Okay. The cookbook is two recipes away from being finished. I have two more recipes to type, and then it goes off to the proofreader, my very good friend, Cat's Cradle. And, uh, and then hopefully just a few little aesthetic tweaks and it will be ready for sale. And I will be selling it in, on my website. I will also be selling it. I will have a separate blog spot page where I will be selling the cookbook. And let's see. Da, 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 da. I think that's all the catching up we have to do. Now, I want to introduce you to Mr. one of Mr. Fulgham's other books. This is It Was on Fire When I Laid Down on It. I always say that title wrong, too. Um, this is, I believe, the second book after everything I need to know I learned in kindergarten. Um, yes, this is the second book. And this particular entry is one that I lovingly refer to as the gunk. Now... We talked a lot about GMO foods. We talked a lot about life in general, about painting and about redoing the floors and how about all that stuff is no fun and being grown up is no fun. And so and I just got finished telling you that I like to blow up and I get all upset and then I have to take a step back and realize that there's nothing I can do to change it. I just have to do it and get over it, right? Well, that's kind of how what the gunk deals with. So I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to start reading and I hope you enjoy this entry. This is one of my all-time favorites and, and I think it is super awesome. Okay. <clears throat> After the dishes are washed and the sink rinsed out, there remains in the strainer at the bottom of the sink what I will call momentarily some stuff. A rational, intelligent, objective person would say that this is simply a mixture of food particles too big to go down the drain, composed of bits of protein, carbohydrates, fat, and fiber, dinner dandruff. Furthermore, the person might add that not only was the material first sterilized by the high heat of cooking, but further sanitized by going through the detergent and hot water of the dishpan and rinsed. No problem. But any teenager who has, his, who has been dragooned into washing dishes knows this explanation is simply a lie. That stuff in the bottom of the strainer is toxic waste, deadly poison, a danger to health. In other words, it's as icky as icky can get. One of the very few reasons I had any respect for... Turn the page. My mother, when I was 13, was because she would reach into the sink with her bare hands, bare hands, and pick up that lethal gunk and drop it into the garbage. To top that off, I saw her reach into a wet garbage bag and fish around in there looking for a lost teaspoon, barehanded. A kind of mad courage. She found the spoon in a clump of coffee grounds mixed with scrambled egg remains, and the end of the and the end of the vegetable soup, I almost passed out. When she handed it to me to rinse off, I almost passed out. No teenager who wanted to live would have touched that without being armed with gloves, a face mask, and stainless steel tongs. Once in school, I came across the French word adieu. And when the teacher told me what it meant, unspeakable filth, I knew exactly to what it referred. We had it every night in the bottom of the sink. When I reported my new word to my mother at dishwashing time, she gave me her, my son the idiot look, 
and explained that dinner I had just eaten was in just about the same condition in my stomach at the moment, rotting. And it hadn't even been washed and rinsed before it went down my drain. If she had given me a choice between that news and being hit across the head with a two-by-four, I would have gladly gone for the board. I lobbied long and hard for a disposal and an automatic dishwasher, knowing full well that they had been invented so nobody would ever have to touch the gunk again. Never mind what any parent or objective adult might tell me, I knew that the stuff in the sink drainer was lethal and septic. It would give you leprosy, or something worse. If you should ever accidentally touch it, you must never touch any other part of your body with your fingers until you had scalded and soaked and rinsed your hands. Even worse, I knew that the stuff could congeal and mush up and mutate into some living thing that would crawl out of the sink during the night and get loose in the house. Why not just use rubber gloves, you ask? Oh, come on. Rubber gloves are for sissies. Besides, my mother used her bare hands, remember? My father never came closer than three feet to the sink in his life. My mother said he was lazy, but I knew that he knew what I knew about the gunk. Once after dinner, I said to him that I bet Jesus never had to wash dishes and clean the gunk out of the sink. He agreed. It was the only theological discussion we ever had. My father, however, would take a plunger to the toilet when it was stopped up and with even worse stuff. I wouldn't even go in the room when he did it. I didn't want to know. But now, now I am a grown-up. And have been for some time. And I imagine making a speech to high school graduating class. First I would ask them, how many of you would like to be an adult? An independent, on-your-own citizen. All would raise their hands with some enthusiasm. And then I would give them the list of things that grown-ups do. Clean the sink strainer. Plunge out the toilet. Wash up babies when they poop and pee. Wipe runny noses. Clean up the floor when the baby throws strained spinach. Clean ovens and grease traps and roasting pans. Empty the kitty box and scrape up the dog dew. Carry out the garbage. Pump out the bilges. Bury dead pets when they get run over in the street. I tell the graduates that when they can do these things, they will be adults. Some of the students might not want to go on at this point, but they may as well face the truth. It can get worse than the list suggests. My wife is a doctor, and I won't tell you what she tells me she has to do sometimes. I wish I didn't know. I feel ill at ease sometimes being around someone who does those things, and also proud. A willingness to do your share of cleaning up the mess is a test. And taking out the garbage of this life is a condition of membership in community. When you are a kid, you feel that if they really loved you, they wouldn't ever ask you to take out the garbage. When you join the ranks of the grown-ups, you take out the garbage because you love them. And by them, I mean not only your own family, but the family of humankind. The old cliché holds firm and true. Being an adult is dirty work but someone has to do it. We all have to do it. And if we don't do it, does it do any of us any good? Probably not. And we do it because we love each other. Because there's a little saying I like to live by, and it says, excellence is love in action. Which, interpreted by me, means that if I do my very best every single time to try and achieve excellence, I show the people that I care about how very much I love them. And I will leave you with that thought, and I will leave you and ask you to have an excellent week, and I hope that all the things that you want to get done, you get done, and I hope that I get a lot done in my living room in my hallway, and I will see you in the vids during the week. Have a good one. I'll see ya.